Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to Synth Stuff. What is a mod matrix and why should you care? Coming up. In order to tell you about what a mod matrix is and how you would use one in your sound design on your synthesizer, we first need to talk about modulation and the history of modulation. And thankfully, I've got some old 80s synths over here that we can use to demonstrate and see how modulation used to be done. Then we'll come forward and talk about mod matrices and how we do modulation today. Let's start on this old SH-101 from Roland. If we see here, it is a simple monosynth. Plays one note at a time and we can have a modulator. We have one modulating source and it is an LFO, which you can hear. Now what is this actually modulating? Well, it can modulate any number of things. We can change the speed at which it's playing. And then what is it modulating? Well, it depends on what we have it set to here. We can set it to modulate the filter. Or down here, you can see we have the, the LFO can be also assigned to the bender. If we stick, we push it upwards. If we push that down zero to zero and push the bender up, nothing happens. But if we push it up higher and then push the stick up, it engages the modulator, the LFO, to affect the frequency. We also have the ability to modulate either the oscillator or the filter using this bender here. So if we have it set to oscillator here and the filter off, or with the filter, then we can modulate the filter. Or both. So that's pretty much all the modulation options you get with the SH-101, which is fine. If we move up to the Korg Poly 6, again, we have a single modulator. They call it the modulation generator instead of LFO. And you can see it also has a low frequency flashing light that indicates the frequency that it is operating at. We can say we want it to start after a certain delay. We also can adjust the frequency and the level. Now we can tell it what we want it to affect with this switch here. We can say, I want it to affect the VCO, the oscillator, which is the pitch. So if I increase the level, you can hear the, the pitch oscillating with the LFO. Or I could do frequency. So it's gonna affect the cutoff. And then if I turn the uh, resonance up, we'll really hear that. Or we could have it affect the amplitude. So now we have the option to select what the LFO, what the modulator is going to affect. Now we only get to pick one of these. We can't have it affect more than one thing at a time, but it, it gives us more capability on the Korg Poly 6 to, to make some more interesting sounds. On the Gaia 2, we have the, also the ability to affect modulation, but we have two LFOs and we can change what each of these is going to affect. We can say we want it to affect the cutoff or we can change other things that it's going to change affect. So we could say LFO 1, we want to have it affect the filter cutoff and also the amplitude and then LFO 2, we're going to have it uh, affect the oscillator 1 or we, we, so we have a lot more flexibility because we can assign each of these to things and we can change it as we're playing fairly easily. So we, more sophistication, more ability to, to make changes in our modulation with the Gaia 2. Next, let's look at the Micro Freak. So the Micro Freak has an actual mod matrix. As you can see here, we've got a matrix. This is kind of like the matrix, it's like a scaled down version of the matrix brute. The difference is here, if we look on the left, we can see here's all our modulation sources, envelope, LFO, key pressure, key arpeggio. And then up here are all the things that are possible destinations. And then we light up which ones are actually going to be affected. So we could have the LFO, right now it's affecting pitch, but if we wanted to, we could affect the waveform, the timbre, the filter cutoff at the same time. So if we just turn this matrix knob, we can see here's the LFO. It's affecting pitch right now, which you can hear. 
So let's turn that one off. And then we want to have it affect cutoff instead. And then over here, we're going to say how much of the, is it going to affect it? So we can adjust. It's not an on or off. We can say we want the LFO to affect the cutoff a huge amount, which is what we're hearing. Say we want to also have it affect the timbre. So we can select the timbre on as well, and we say we want the LFO to also affect the timbre quite a bit. <laughs> now let's turn that one off, get rid of the timbre, and let's say we want key pressure to affect timbre. And we want that, to, again, to affect that tremendously. 100%. So now if I press it lightly, if I hit it hard, it's a different sound. Because I'm affecting the timbre as I've set up here in the mod matrix. So this gives us a lot of flexibility. All these things can affect all these different things and we can affect how much they're going to affect them. Over here we have the summit. I'm going to do an initialize on the summit. And as you can see, we have a mod button here, which allows us to affect the mod matrix inside the summit. The summit has, I believe it's eight, nope, 16. 16 modulation slots. So what we can say is for each of these slots, we can say, where do we want the source to be? Let's say we want aftertouch. When we press aftertouch, it's going to affect the pitch of oscillators one, two, and three, and it's going to affect it an awful lot. So by doing that, now if I press a key and then push into it, that's probably too much. Try it again. And that's not enough. Turn it up a bit. So now the aftertouch is affecting the pitch. What else could we do? Well, we can have another slot. So in slot two, let's say um, mod wheel. We want the mod wheel and we want it to affect, oh, how about filter? Where's our, our filter? Filter, ooh, filter drive, filter distortion, filter frequency. Fre let's say filter frequency and we want the depth to be quite a ways up. I'm gonna turn the resonance up on the filter And now, let's turn the, the frequency down. Now if we press the mod wheel, we get, it's operating that filter cutoff. That's quite a bit of, of resonance in there. So let's set up a third slot that is gonna say the mod wheel is also going to affect, oops, I hit the wrong button there. The mod wheel is going to also affect the filter resonance value and we'll say um, put it up like that and I'm going to turn the default resonance down because it was up all the way now let's listen to it so you can hear the filter open and at the same time the resonance is going up we could make it go backwards so the resonance goes closed as we push the modulation up which is probably not going to sound like much. But we can hear that resonance down at the low end. But these are bipolar, so I can make them act backwards as they normally would act. Then we come over here to the hydrosynth, which is the modulation matrix beast. If I say init, we're going to init a patch. Here's our mod matrix. We have so many slots in here. We have 32 slots that we can assign things. And whereas on the summit, we can say, okay, I want uh, this wheel to affect this control. And I want uh, aftertouch to affect that control. This is totally different because the destinations can be almost limitless. Let's say we want to have the first one. We can say assign, and we're going to pick what we want in here, or we can just press it. Instead of saying envelope four, let's say LFO three. I'm just gonna press it and you can see it picks LFO three. So now I'm gonna push down here and what's our destination going to be? Well, all oscillator pitch. 
Okay, that's fine. And then of course we wanna change how much it's going to affect it. And again, bipolar, so we can make it positive or negative change. So let's listen to what happens now. As you can see, LFO3 is flashing as it's modulating. And that's the result. That's what we just did there. There's another way you can make connections much easier on the hydrosynth. If I say I wanna take LFO4, first we're gonna take LFO4, we'll select it, and I'm gonna make it a little bit faster. So it's one hertz, let's make it four hertz, maybe three in a bit. And we can make it fade in and out and so on. All right, so now that's what LFO4 is. I wanna connect LFO4 to the filter. So I'm just gonna hold down LFO4, and while I'm holding it down, I'm gonna press filter one, and it immediately takes us right to the mod matrix page, creates a new entry, and now I can set the depth that I want. Now we can listen to that. And you can hear we've got this one modulating the pitch, this one modulating the frequency. That's pretty cool. But it goes far, far beyond this. Let's go over to this one where we can assign, let's say, envelope 5. So I'm going to say envelope 5. I hit it, it automatically picks envelope five there. And we are going to assign it to, oh, look at this, mod matrix depth one. So I can, I can modulate this mod matrix entry from this mod matrix entry. So I, I can say depth, what's the depth going to be? Or I can change the depth of any of the mod matrix entries. So I'm gonna say the, the depth of one from envelope five, and we're going to make the make it fairly deep. Envelope five, now I'm gonna save that. Now envelope five, let's see what it's set up to. So we have an attack, we have a delay. Let's turn up a delay. So that's got a delay of, let's say, uh, two and a half seconds, that's fine. Let's go back to the mod matrix page and the depth that we're gonna have on, LF, on the first mod matrix entry, we're gonna put that back down to zero, or close to it. Now if we play it, you realize that pitch is no longer sw swinging up and down like crazy. But if we play it and wait for a few seconds, and that's because after a few seconds, envelope five takes effect, which activates this, which then takes the depth of one and increases it. So, and we could actually change that if we wanted to, we could say envelope five, we want to bring in the attack slowly over say a second or so. So now it'll ramp up, it will start doing that as we go. And uh, you'll start hearing that. We could do it even slower. That's crazy. You can modulate pretty much anything from anything in the hydrosynth, and it makes it so you can create these crazy evolving sounds that anything can modulate anything else. If there's a knob on here that you could twist it, you can modulate it from pretty much anything. And look at all the different things that we can modulate from. All the sources in here that you can modulate from. Envelopes, LFOs, and then you can make them bipolar or unipolar. You see the plus there. Uh, aftertouch, mono or poly aftertouch, key tracking, velocity, pitch wheel, mod wheel, ribbon, you know, ribbon on here can modulate things as well, expression pedal, mod in one and two, that's really cool. Look at these jacks over here. If we have a, a, a external modular system, a modular synth that provides CV, we can plug in CV inputs in there and use those CV inputs as a source in our mod matrix. There's just so many things, random CCs that you can set up. So you could have an external uh, device or a DAW send CCs, any any CC, and you can use it as a mod source in the in the hydrosynth. And if you have it set up so that the mod is actually uh, modulating something, you could plug audio into that. If you wanted to have a, a drum, like a kick drum going into here, into your mod matrix, you can then use that in here and assign that maybe to a, a, your amplifier and you can assign it negative so that every time you have a kick drum coming in here, it's gonna duck down the amplifier and act like a side chain on the synthesizer just by using the mod matrix. How cool is that? 
If you found this video interesting or useful, please click like on it. Subscribe to the channel, it really helps me out when you do that. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, leave them in the comments section below. If you have any other questions or requests for videos that you'd like to see me do, leave them also in the comments section below. I read all your comments. Thanks for watching.